Okay, this video is about me fixing this C-SPY. Again, I forgot to record an intro video, so this has already been finished and cleaned. But join me in my journey as I clean this thing. Now, I dive right into the trolling motor repair. So, little story. I bought two of these. One of them had a motor, one of them didn't. And it wasn't attached, it was just laying on the ground next to them. But, yeah, let's go fix that trolling motor. So I was looking at the C-SPY motor here, the, uh, the only one I have, and I was thinking, the motor itself, there's probably nothing wrong with. The brushes work, the motor spins, I clean up the armature. In theory, this is probably fine. What doesn't work is the built-in electronic speed controller into the thing. So my uh, little epiphany I had, remove this, hook up the brushes straight to some wires coming out, and worry about a speed controller elsewhere rather than the one built into here. That'll save me quite a bit of money and give me a better motor. So, I'm going to take it apart, see if I can't fix it, and uh, you know, rig it up. Not so much fix, but we'll see what happens. Now, just because I'm curious to how it works, I'm going to pop one of these relays off and see how the connection is made to the brush. It doesn't really matter, but I'm just curious. So that again should be warm enough. So whatever kind of solder that is, it ain't working. So the plan is now, anyway, to just grind off this back solder here along with this brass ring and remove the brush itself. So, come on, focus, that's your problem. So I don't think they ever planned on anybody replacing these brushes. I really don't. So plan B, now I'm just going to drill at the center and see what happens. Now I got one out, so that worked. Let's see, second one. Too easy. Yeah, that one's pretty in there. Not much wall left to grab. Whatever solder they used, it really worked. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll keep messing with it. I suppose I can get a Phillips or a flathead and try hammering it down. Let me give that a try. And it's kind of twisting now, so should kind of pop off. Looks like I still had some brass kind of infused into it. Looks like a brass rivet ring. Probably put in a little button press or something. Expand and they go in and grab the sidewalls. But anyway, there is our uh, there's our brushes removed. So now, what the uh, thought was, I put them over to this side. Actually, I know what I could do, probably. Reverse them. So that the, the uh, bends they already have to them kind of stays put. Anyway, so put that right there. If it works. Probably will. Yeah. I don't think it matters. But anyway, with that like so, Put a wire in there, bolt it all together, and see what happens. Alright, now, since the controller doesn't do anything anymore, at least the speed part of it, I'm going to go ahead and rip that wiring out of there. Reason being, it's going to bug me looking at it. It's going to get in my way when I go to put this thing back together, and it doesn't do anything anymore anyway. Especially since I kind of drilled through the relay when I was drilling out the brush. So it's pretty much lost cause at this point. We have a bundle of uh, glue and caulking in there holding the wire together, so I'm not going to take it all the way out. But if I can get it to the point where I can't see it, I decide that I'm out of mind, right? Perfect. 
That looks better. Alright, just went down to the hardware store. Picked myself up a little nut and bolt. So we're gonna hook this up and see how it works. I have high hopes for it personally, but you never know. So let's uh, let's shoot for there and see how that goes. Don't really know how much room is in here. Probably not much at all. Actually, I'll probably make it count kind of that way. Yeah, that looks good. What I should do, I should clean up the bottom of this terminal. Eh, it's clean. Alright, never mind. So originally this was like so. See it making a difference. I'll keep it up. At least I think it was, I have no idea. I'm paying that much attention apparently. Alright, so I'm gonna screw this one down and we will see what happens. Terminals are connected, the brush is probably working again. So now I gotta find a good way to get these wires to go back in there. It'll probably work like that. Yeah, I'm sure it will. Uh, the only problem is my negative that's coming down. It needs to kind of be rotated. So it's coming up. Oh, so that's not too bad. Like so, should uh, make it go back into the motor housing a little bit easier. Alright, hard part now is getting the brushes back in aligned. Springs right there. good. Doesn't look like wires are going to be in the way of anything. Except for the red. Poking out through the other side. Perfect. Right there. Alright. The housing back in. Now the fun part is going to be aligning that brush plate, if you will, so these screws go in properly. Looks like I'm pretty far off right there because the screws are kind of going in sideways. Let's see if I can get one in and the other one. Looks like that might do it. Yep. One screw's in. <sighs> Where'd the other one go? Alright, nose cone's got to go back on. Like those screws have grabbed a little spot in the nose. Got a line thin. Hope that's centered.
Alright, let's get a battery, see if it works. Alright, I got a battery. I'm gonna hook it up. This is a 24 volt motor, 12 volt battery, but whatever. Okay. See what happened? It's fun. <laughs> uh, we're getting somewhere. So I use those vice grips you see there. Turn the motor by hand a few times. Oh, it's just working. See? Hear it? I don't quite know why it's binding up like that. So I got some vice grips and I freed up the shaft a little bit. So let me show you what happens now. Apparently nothing anymore. It must have seized itself up again. So, kind of works, I guess. I wouldn't say it's uh, smooth or quiet like you would expect, but uh, it's something, I guess. Now, it is a 24 volt motor, so let's go ahead and give it 24 volts and see what happens. A list of bad ideas. Why not, right? You know, honestly, it's it's not really as bad as I thought it was going to be. If it doesn't keep sticking. Eh. Motor's not really getting warm. Maybe a little up here, but... Uh, this is a little, a little warm, a little. I don't know, I'm kind of tempted to put it in the C-spy and see what happens. Well, in the interest of uh, not spending money unless I have to, decided to rig up this propeller onto the shaft. So this is actually a motor guide propeller, the one that came off this motor that was just sitting on there. The hardware kit for it is $15. The a new propeller with hardware kit is $30. So, eh, I didn't want to spend $15 to be able to screw that propeller on. Naturally, the uh, hole size here is pretty odd, so I didn't have a uh, easy way to get a pin for it. I'll address that later, but for now, a 632 rod fits in there pretty nicely. It looks pretty dark on my camera. Hopefully you can see that okay. And uh, naturally it uses a fine thread 3 16ths. It's a little hard to find a fine thread 3 16 nylon nut washer, but they didn't even use that to begin with. Did I get the wrong washer? I sure did. Picked up two, grabbed the wrong one. Ah, oh, crap. So I gotta, I gotta go exchange that. That sucks. I go 16 cents. But anyway. The nut will fit on. Keep me from losing my washer at least. Maybe I'll just make this video over again. Okay, now for the washer. I don't know if the washer needs to be there, but it might help spread the uh, force out a little more evenly. Get my prop nut wrench here. Good enough. All right, now it's time to wash these things. As uh, the seat's barely doing anything already, uh, the plan is to just pull off the other screws holding the seat on and just take the whole thing off. Uh, back, I'd like to do the same too, just to get it out of the way. The problem is I can't get the bolts behind the uh, seat there, so I'm just gonna leave them on. Let's 
do. Two hands would really be handy right about now. But that ain't an option. Alright, that's out of the way. Should make this a lot easier now. And naturally, I have the baby here helping me. And this little Ahoy Matey boat shirt. Say hi. You want to stay out of the camera? No? You shy? Alright, these handlebar grips, they're, uh, they're disgusting. So, I'm going to cut those off. Alright, I got some water and some dish soap. The plan is to kind of get all the loose dirt off with that and then go to something a little better for cleaning. Bucket and a rag. Wet the whole thing down. Pour some dish soap on it and kind of Get down in the tougher dirt. And uh, get rid of the thing, basically. All right, we got some uh, clean water in the old bucket there and a uh, Clean rags, so now I'll do a, another down. All right, time to continue cleaning. So to do this, pretty easy. I just get some uh, soft scrub, the rag. Rag's a little damp, of course. And you just start scrubbing softly. And it's all the well bedded dirt out of there. It gives it a nice clean, polishy look to it. And little fine scuffs and stuff. Unless you really want to get out, because enough of those make it look like crap. Well, the other side's pretty clean. Uh, continuing on to this side now. Looks like I got a pretty good scuff up front. Yeah. Concentrate on that. The uh, handle is not really that cute looking on this one. Well, it's pretty much done now. Um, well, cleaning anyway. I think the soft scrub did an absolute excellent job cleaning the, this thing up. This stuff would probably be great in like, you know, a shower or something. Anyway, moving on. Okay, let's get some new uh, terminals crimped onto our uh, wiring here. Now I did a pretty good job burning up the ends testing this thing, so trim down the wire a little bit. Start fresh. My terminals and seals. 
Now, as much as I uh, applaud the uh, good construction of these things, what they really messed up on was the terminal crimping. Look at that. That is just horrible. It's like they didn't even have a crimp tool when they crimped these things. Just a bad, bad job. So that's what it should look like. That's a good crimp. Got a new uh, quarter inch bolt. Be running in through the hole in the top of the uh, pole here, holding everything together. So let's go ahead and get this thing installed so it's not on my desk anymore and I don't have to look at it. Now that is a tight fit, let me tell you. I got a ways to go. Well, that's fine, huh? Well, there's a bunch of crud inside of there, too, so that's probably not helping very much. Who's calling me? Yellow. All right, continuing on. I know it's dark down there and you can't see anything, but what I'm doing is turning the trolling motor while pushing it upright, and it's kind of going a centimeter at a time. So. Probably should have gone the other way with the bolt. See, I wanted the uh, threads to be easy to get to because I struggled with that last time getting the nut on. Okay. And I'll get in there with the wrench and twist it in. Yeah, I turned the bolts around. I caved. Eh, what are you doing, you know? Tighten her down. All right, my old wiring. Don't need the little plug. Do need the big. Looks like red goes on this side. I'll go ahead and put that in. Put in our black. Alright, motor's plugged in correctly too, so that's handy. Piece of the wire I cut. Now I was missing the uh, little porthole cover thing here. Uh, luckily, that is a generic marine part, nothing especially made for the sea spy itself, which means the Sea Dog line port cover is exactly what this once was. Now this is a six inch, don't let that fool you. Nothing on this cover measures six inches. That's just their size. It actually says it on there, so. Outside diameter, eighth and an eighth. Cutout diameter, six and a half. Whatever. So. Yeah, I just crossed right it. Great. So that goes there. Let's really see the color difference between the new and the old, but yeah, it's fine. I'm also missing the uh, one under the back seat here. But picked another one of those. This is a uh, five inch or a six and three quarter outside diameter with a cutout diameter of five and a half. So, you know, that makes sense. All right, let's go uh, five to uh, six and three quarter inch thing in here. Yeah, this puppy's coming together. So I went and hooked up some batteries. The gauge moved. So here's uh, kind of my predicament. The gauge works. The gauge works. I'd like to leave the gauge in. Um, the problem is I planned on using this hole to mount my switches. 
I'm going to have a forward, backwards, and a high, low switched for speed. And uh, I don't want to mount them next to the stop switch because a they won't fit, and I don't want the stop switch to get inner, you know, little thing to get wound around the switch and it not pull it off should I fall off the thing. So I'd like to leave that by itself over there. And yeah, I can't get two two switches inside of this hole and use a gauge, or get two switches in the hole and use the shutoff switch. So I'm kind of out of room. Um, I do have the hole here. Problem is, I still can't even get this switch into there. I tried all kinds of different options to get it to rotate in, and it just won't go. I even bent all the terminals down to get those out of the way, and I still can't get it in there. It's just too close to match in there. It, it sucks. Now, if I found a switch where I could remove the, uh, the toggle itself, put the switch in, and then screw the toggle back in, it'd fit. That I would do, because then I would have forward and backwards right here, and then a high-low on that side. Problem is, you can't get the switch in there, so kind of kind of done for on that one. I'm going to call it a night and uh, sit on it for a while and see if I'm going to remove the gauge or try to figure something else out. So here's what I think. I don't think that the uh, trolling motor I have installed in this thing is going to work for very long. I'm pretty sure it's on its last leg already. And when, when that happens, I'll need another trolling motor anyway. That chances are it's going to have a functioning... Uh, speed controller, making my switch setup useless. So what I plan to do is just remove the wiring, remove the gauge, and uh, install my switches and see how it does. May last for years, may last for one outing. But someday I'll install another trolling motor and we'll revisit installing the gauge and the switch where it's supposed to go. So for the time being, I'm going to rip the wiring out and uh, custom wire it. All right, I started getting the wiring out of here, so I'm going to uh, continue doing that. So let me show you how I'm going to wire this. Uh, this is the motor. It is a 24 volt motor, so we need two batteries. Um, this is the emergency stop switch and these are the two switches that I'm going to be adding so usually you would have the two batteries wired in uh, series parallel series yeah anyway let me show you how that would look so by doing it that way I'm only going to have 24 volts thus only one speed what the C-SPY originally had was a jumper wire to go from this positive over to this negative, and then you connect your negative and positive accordingly, and you get 24 volts. Problem is, I want a high and a low switch. So, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that, but one fun thing that I decided to do, you originally had a red wire that ran from here over to here. So on this side of the battery, you had two red wires to hook up, and one just was handwritten positive, or negative, right? Sorry. So I didn't like that idea because it was pretty easy to screw it up. So my plan is, at least for the jump wire, is go there and then put a splice in it right here where it'll continue off and be a black wire. So that way, when you're putting in this battery, you'll have a red and a black. And when you put in this battery, you'll have a red and a black. Pretty easy to not mess the two up. So this switch is a uh, double pull, double throw. I could have used a single pull, double throw here, but I figured buy one of the same switch and be a lot easier. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tap in right here to my splice and run another wire over to this switch. Now my negative going to connect to this battery, come around, go over here, and my positive, coming off this battery, it's going to come up and go all the way over to here. And then what I need to do, positive from here, all the way over to here. I just messed that up, crap. 
Who's texting me? Yeah, I messed that up. Sorry about that. I don't really feel like drawing on my little pictures again, so ignore that. All right. So this switch is going to be my high and low, and it's actually going over to here. So what this will basically do when the switch is, you know, using these two positions, it's going to give me the positive lead coming off of here, thus only 12 volts. When you pull this positive lead coming off this battery, you'll have 24. So that'll be between a, high, a 12 and a 24 volt switch or a high and a low. This will be my direction control switch. So my other negative wire coming off the battery, it obviously needs to go somewhere. So it is going to go over here to my emergency stop switch. The emergency stop switch then comes over to join this leg, the motor switch. Um, I was thinking of a way where I could disconnect the red using the stop switch. Couldn't really think of a way. And then I drew it out and then I realized I could have just tapped it in right here and it would be fine. Yeah, I really, they're really bugging me. But the ground, cutting off the ground will work just, just fine anyway. So if you know anything about motor reversing, um, all you basically need to do is swap the red and the black wire. You can do that via switch by making a little cross. So from there over to here, and then from our ground here over to here. Now these two wires, doesn't matter which way they go really be our motor control, which will run down around the C-SPY, connect there, and our red will connect all the way over to here. Make sense? So when you use, again, to elaborate here, use this switch between high and low, it depends on how much voltage goes over to the switch, whether it's going to be 12 or 24. So in this position, the motor is connected here, just straight through. So you got forward, run through, and power the motor. When you switch it back, these are connected. Maybe asking, well, how does that get power? That comes from your jump you just made here. And since you crossed it, your jump is now backwards, reversing the polarity of the motor, spinning in the other direction. So that is my plan, and that is how I'm going to be wiring it. So let me get started. So this is my uh, switch plate I just got done making. It's even got two little holes. Now this is for a special switch option you don't see too often, too often. but you have a little locking ring that will lock the switch into that hole, make sure it doesn't spin on you. So if you're doing like a uh, traditional panel mount, you would drill your hole with that little switch notch cut out of it. Pretty hard to do with drill press, but that's why they make these locking rings to uh, counter that. Okay, first things first. Let's get our motor wire terminals connected. Here's my jumper wire. Put that in first. second black wire. This will be for this battery. That'll run from here over to here it's to the circuit breaker. Now this is my 24 volts wire. It'll run from this battery over to the uh, voltage switch. So this gives me my 12 volt line and my 24 volt line. And this is my ground wire. 
are made to run from the circuit breaker to the little emergency kill switch there. All right, so I uh, ran my switch array that I made into it. Uh, I have my, when you go to high here, it pulls from this wire, which is the 24 volt wire. Low, it pulls from this wire, which is the 12 volt wire. And then I connected the motor to the center two pins on this switch. And I ran the other uh, black wire out to this side, which has since fallen back in. But that should be it for as far as my switches go. All right, baby's joining me again. Uh, I got a new uh, safety switch. I'm gonna replace that up with the old one. Okay, new safety switch is installed. If memory serves me correctly, this gets connected to the M terminals. Sorry, can't really figure out how to do that. Just like so. Ah, broken. That sucks. Uh, maybe I'll glue it in or make a new one of these. Uh, I'll leave it for now. Alright, now I'm going to screw the circuit breaker back together, screw these down, see what I can't fix about the little chip that just broke off. See what happens. It's hooked up. So you're going to see if it works. Yeah, the circuit breaker. This switch. Go to low and on. Nothing. Well, that's odd. Oh, I turned it off. Low is quite slow. It sounds like a jet ski starting. Yeah. Well, that's good. So, works. Uh, so, basically, high, low, forward, backwards. Problem is, I got forward and backwards, backwards. I'm going to switch the motor wires, should get that squared away. Alright, let's t test the uh, reverse. <laughs> test the reverse, test the cutoff switch. Seems to be working. Don't think there's going to be problems with the circuit breaker, but let's try it. Perfect. Well, yeah, I think it's all working. Well, she's pretty much back together at this point, so uh, we're off to a good start with that. Uh, I just got the uh, handles here to put in, and that's almost done. So it's kind of funny. Uh, I got these blue ones in the mail and my dad saw them and he just says oh good you're getting rid of those stupid ugly red ones well no these are for the other one oh yeah the red ones look okay too these just look a little better oh yeah yeah it's funny really didn't like the red ones don't know why Yeah, as you can see, I had some trouble screwing the that last little handle on, but it's on there. So that is it, folks. Uh, this thing should be water ready at this point. I've cleaned it up pretty well. The seats are looking okay. Inside's clean. Under, I even cleaned up meat on this one because it was extra dirty. 
all in all, not too bad. Went smoothly. Um, I'm going to see how long this trolling motor in this thing lasts. Um, I don't know. I think it might be fine, but we'll see how it goes. And also, I want to see what the performance difference in the two is. Uh, so, yeah, until next time, keep an eye out for the next one when I'm throwing this one in the water. I don't know if it'll be the next video, but the next video about the Sea Spy will be me putting this in the water. No, uh, actually, I don't want to deal with it. All right. So I'm going to fix the trailer, and then I'm going to put this in the water. So, uh, yeah, subscribe so you can see everything about it. All right, everybody. See you next time.